Behold the rose in nature or in your garden and learn a simile from it. Welcome, Swagadam. When I regard the fact that Jesus turned to nature for his similes, illustrations, etc., I understand why this is so very helpful. A great deal about our own life and especially things far more interesting than we usually become aware of can be learned by engaging with nature. Our alienation from nature in the wake of the rise of the urban culture, which is a significant aspect of modernity, has advantages and disadvantages. And uh, in this video, I'm more mindful of the disadvantages, what you have lost than what you have gained or the advantages. <clears throat> And this video is only really an illustration of a much broader topic and perhaps the first in the series. Think of a rose plant in your garden or a wild rose growing on the edge of your property. There's a significant difference between the rose flower in the garden and a human being. I don't know if this has occurred to you to think that the rose flower is an invitation to approach. When you find a rose flower, it's almost irresistible if, it's, if it is in its prime to go and, if possible, smell it. So, as far as the beauty of nature is concerned, it's all about coming near, nearer and nearer. But now think of human beings. Human beings are to be seen and admired from a distance. The closer you get to human beings, the more disappointed you become. Um, Whereas, the closer you get to a rose plant, the more um, attracted the, uh, and richer you feel. You cannot smell a rose from a distance. You have to go near the rose, put your nose close to the rose flower and take in the full joy of the fragrance of the fresh flower. Whereas, when you get closer and closer to human beings, all your romantic or poetic or glorious notions about them perish one after the other. It is denoting this that there is a proverb in Malayalam which says that it's when you get closer to the seed of the mango that you realize how sour the mango really was. And that is not a reflection in that proverb, it's not a reflection on mango as such, it's a reflection on uh, human beings. One of the perennial problems in human life is to cope with the challenges of proximity. It's all right as long as you maintain a safe distance from people. After all, there is no quarrel between two people who have never met or two people who are at maximum physical distance from each other. Quarrels are always with people who are close together, either neighbors or people who are once your friends, or people within your own congregations. Or between nations, quarrels are always between neighboring countries. Hardly a war breaks out between a country and another country which is uh, 5,000 miles away from it. The conflict in Gaza is between the Jews and the Palestinians because they are neighbors. The trouble in Ukraine is between Ukrainians and Russians because they are neighbors. 
there are ample illustrations in history to prove that one of the skills human beings have not mastered is the skill to deal peacefully and profitably with human proximity. And at the same time, the real blessing of life is also proximity. If you love somebody, you would like that person to be with you, near you, all the time. And you would miss the person if that person is away from you. At the same time, when the love relationship gets hard, the proximity of the very same person becomes suffocating. So, this important and interesting difference between nature and human condition needs to be taken note of. When it comes to a flower, you have to go closer to it. When it comes to human beings, you have to maintain a safe distance from them. What does this indicate? It indicates that something unnatural there is about human nature. There's something wrong somewhere. Or as Shakespeare puts it in his famous play, Hamlet, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. What is that something rotten? The biblical doctrine of the original fall, and the original sin and the fall of human beings is an attempt to explain this reality. There's something wrong. Human nature is infected with the virus of alienation. Which also means that we do not know how to cope with proximity. The classic illustration of this, of course, is the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, epic battle which never ends in history. What's the problem? The problem is proximity. They're close together. Now, nature has not suffered any degeneration as human beings have. Why is it that when it comes to other uh, human beings, when it comes to others, our attitude to them is riddled with this contradiction? On the one hand, we want to relate. On the other, other, on the other hand, we want to keep them at a safe distance. What has gone wrong with human nature that disables us from building and maintaining happy, stable, fulfilling companionship. Think of love marriages. A young man and a young woman fall in love, as indeed they must. And for a while they think that they cannot live without each other. So they marry. And soon enough, problems erupt. And problems erupt only because they are married. Marriage, marriage means proximity. They simply do not know how to deal with it. There's a story that a husband and wife who were forever quarreling were called by their parish priest in order to settle the differences between them. The parish priest was a very uh, well-meaning, caring person and he desperately wanted them, the husband and wife, to live in peace. So he prepared for the session very carefully and imaginatively and he had a well-trained dog and a well-trained cat. And uh, they were very um, harmonious together. They got along very well together. So the, the priest decided that he would keep the dog and the cat together in the room where he would meet with this husband and wife who were fighting cats and dogs. So they arrived, the, the, the priest received them very warmly, affectionately, led them to the appointed room, started talking with them, counselling them, if you like. In the course of the counselling, he asked them, now look at that dog and that cat. Can't you at least be as amicable as that cat and that dog? The husband understood the message immediately. He said, Pastor, just bring, give me a rope. He, uh, he said, what for? Well, I'll tie <coughs> the cat and the dog together. Then you will see what happens. Then they will see <coughs> the cat and the dog tearing each other's throat. He is again dealing with the same topic, proximity, togetherness. 
sense of belonging. Why do, why do we feel suffocated by the sense of belonging? Why are we so incapable of uh, dealing with the nearness, the challenge of nearness? Now, in order to uh, look at the other side of the issue, let's go back to the rose plant in nature. The rose plant <coughs> is characterized not only by a fragrant <coughs> flower or a bunch of flowers, it is also unseen by you from a distance, thorns on its stems. If there are flowers, there are also thorns. Which means, well, it's fine, but keep a reasonable distance. That also is part of nature. See, human relationships, given human nature, needs both proximity and privacy, both. And a healthy relationship is one that provides for both. If you don't have proximity, then your married life will be characterized by increasing sense of alienation. You will feel more and more isolated, more and more lonely because you are married. Uh, I'm again reminded of a story in which two classmates met after their par parted company uh, a long time back. And uh, both of them were in a nightclub. So they started chatting and one of them said, you know, I'm in this nightclub because I've not been able to find a soulmate. So I've remained unmarried. And as a bachelor, this is the only way I have to spend my night time. So I come here. So the, the other chap said, well, you know, I'm here only, be, only because I'm married. <laughs> it's the only way I can spend my time without going mad. Probably this is an exaggeration, but it's an exaggeration of a truth. So this is a real problem and it, it's, it's necessary that we recognize that the problem exists. Therefore, the question then arises as to what we can do about it. It's not enough to have a diagnosis. You must also have a line of treatment. There is a disease. The disease has to be treated. This, the name of the disease is proximity syndrome. I'm just inventing a name for it. The man's inability, human being's inability to deal with the, the challenges and responsibilities, the joys and sorrows of nearness. What are we to do about it? That is something that we have to really think about. Well, if we may draw a lesson from the rose flower, the one thing that we certainly can do is to increase the fragrance of our personality. Now, where in the rose flower does the fragrance lie? Perhaps not on the surface, it comes from within. And a rose flower does not have the kind of depth a human being can develop. Therefore, for us, developing the fragrance of the depth of our personality is of far greater importance than developing fragrance for a rose flower in nature. Unfortunately, this is an aspect of life that most people neglect. And that is because culture tempts us into believing that outward gloss, outward beauty, outward attractiveness alone will suffice. But that will suffice only for a very short while during courtship and maybe in the first few days or at best first few months of married life. When the surface attractiveness evaporates, then you are left with the poverty and the bankruptcy of the inner life. And that's something that needs to be addressed. Plus also, there's a need to cultivate a sense of charity about each other. Now the best explanation of this charity that I can think of, I've encountered in the writings of Soren Kierkegaard, the philosopher. It is charity means treating people more subjectively than we treat ourselves. We treat ourselves very subjectively. That's why we are able to tolerate our foibles, our follies very easily. We are very subjective about them. Whereas we are very objective about the follies and foibles of others, the reason why we are easily irritated by them and we are very intolerant and very critical of them. 
Kierkegaard says it must be reversed. We must become more objective about our follies and foibles and more subjective about the follies and foibles of others, shortcomings of others. I believe that that's uh, something that can do a lot of good. And uh, very likely Soren Kierkegaard derived his insight from the words of Jesus Christ who said, treat others as you would like them to treat you. You would like others to treat you with that most sympathy, consideration, sensitivity, forgiveness, generosity of spirit, etc. Whereas we would be very reluctant to extend the same courtesy to others. So Jesus says, treat others as you would like to be treated by them. At, at any rate, the simple basic intent of this video is to recognize that there is a problem. And that problem is a problem of proximity. Namely, people are not able to handle the resources of human togetherness to the best advantage that can be de derived from it. The Bible at the very beginning says that God looked at human beings and said that it is not good that they are alone. So aloneness is not desirable, which means companionship is fundamental to human happiness. And at the same time, because of our incapacity to deal with the challenges of proximity, companionship becomes a crucible of conflict. And this, this is the disease from which we suffer universally. Human beings suffer from this disease and there must be a treatment. And I've introduced two basic ideas or two basic medicines, if you like, to treat this malady. I'm sure you can provide many more of such insights and in, in topics like this, in issues or problems like this, the best we can do is to think in terms of actual day-to-day -day experience rather than become academic and theoretical about it. I hope that's what I have attempted to do in this video and uh, I'll try and do more videos of this kind looking at nature and trying to derive what insights into the human condition we may derive therefrom. I wish to thank you for your continued participation.